Well, hello, this is Matt Ditsworth from Life's Wealth Development Group podcast, and I like to interview people that are living life and doing the jobs they love. Uh, they're basically people who are following their paths and doing the things that are natural to them uh, because that way they become much much better at it, more efficient, and help a lot more people by doing those natural things that, that they love to do. And I like to get them to explain it. Maybe uh, some people that could be transitioning out of the, the military or tired of their old old life or their old job and want to do something new uh, can listen to these podcasts and find out what else is out there and, and hear it right from the people that are doing it. So today I'm interviewing my sister, Amy Ditsworth, who's from Tennessee. She's a licensed massage therapist, personal trainer, and is also pursuing a holistic health coach certification. Uh, She's also rehabbing her 100-year-old home and enjoys learning to forage and uh, basically about and foraging and wild crafting, uh, which is eating uh, wild plants, uh, but also something like going out in your backyard and picking an apple or blueberries and also looking for medicinal plants. Uh, welcome to the show, Amy. How are you doing today? I'm doing excellent. How are you? I am doing outstanding. Thank you very much for taking your time, and uh, and uh, I know it's very valuable. You know, it's, it's time is one of those resources that we can't get back. You can always get money back, but you can't get that time back. Uh, no, so how's the having. weather out there in Tennessee? <laughs> You're welcome. What do you think of the it's weather right now? Up. What's, it, what's it doing? It's warming up. We're starting to get hot now. In the yeah, 90s, it's nice and humid out there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very humid. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started, and uh, I'll just ask you a few questions, a little bit about your background and and uh, what you're doing in in physical or in uh, massage therapy, personal training, and stuff like that. So, uh, what is your background, and how did you get started in massage therapy? Mm, massage probably started a long time ago. Um, I know my our parents were uh, very affectionate people. And mom would give us back rubs at night, and Karen and I would, our sister would give each other back rubs, and so it probably started pretty early on, but the idea was put into my head. Uh, I had just moved to Knoxville with mom and dad and got a job working for a, a shop at home type TV network, and uh, it was a very high stress job. We'd answer phones and take orders, and and at the time they were doing uh, they were like live um, auctions, auction shows where they would auction off uh, jewelry, uh, gemstones. And so, in between phone calls, I would get up and and massage people's shoulders, and so I I would get a lot of compliments, and of course. That felt pretty good, and but I had never thought of it as any sort of career. And at that time, I think internet was that was like '94, so internet was just barely starting to come around. And yeah. and uh, I had a friend who had internet, and so we started looking and looking into it, and and it was a career. I mean, there was lots of schools out there that taught it, and uh, so I found the school and saved up and moved on out to Salt Lake City, Utah, to Utah College of Massage Therapy, and I lived out there for a year and a half while I went to school, and then uh, came back to Knoxville and got started in 2000. So out there in Utah, is uh, Utah, is that the only school that's available, or is that the best school, or just the one that you happened to, uh, basically, that you saw and uh, kind of had that first experience with, is that uh, how did you end up going to that one specifically? Well, that one, uh, there were several schools like New York, uh, California, Florida, had quite a few. Um, but Salt Lake City, the curriculum was really good, uh, really well-rounded. Um, uh, price probably had a lot to do with it. It probably wasn't nearly as expensive. Um, at the time, there were um, only a couple schools available in my area, Uh Actually, only one. I only knew of one. Uh, come to find out, there was there were two, but but there was only one selection at at that time. But it was it was more about the curriculum and and just going somewhere different. 
uh, the curriculum offered. Uh, we had uh, cadaver labs. We weren't allowed. We didn't cut cadavers, but uh, we had access to the to the university, and so we had access to look at true cadavers and learning the anatomy and physiology from mm -hmm. from that point of view was just an incredible experience. So um, yeah. yeah, it had all kinds of appeal to me. Okay. Yeah, very but there are plenty, and and now I mean there are, there are schools everywhere now. Yeah, it so seems like massage therapy has uh, kind of grown over the years since you've been doing it. Oh, exponentially. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like it's uh, massage therapy or something like that was. It sounds like it naturally evolved. You know, like you said, from mm -hmm. from when you were growing up there, when uh, you know something basically that was done to you in a, in a sense, and then also uh, something, so you, you felt the benefits of it and wanted to uh, provide those benefits for other people, you know, you know whenever you're working at a high-stress job and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. so that word, yeah. yeah, that word natural, it kind of, uh, I was thinking about it today, and, and sometimes I think that people try and force themselves into a job or into a life that they they think others will like instead of what naturally fits for them. And uh, so I just real quick had a, a thought, a question uh, throw in here. Do you, do you suggest that people find something that comes natural if they want to be happy and good at it? Does that sound like something that uh, in your experience over the years that you've uh, not only for yourself, that other people you've met uh, that are doing what seems to be natural for them, that they're more happy. Does that question make sense? <laughs> It makes sense, and and I absolutely agree with it. I I believe so. Okay. I have witnessed it. I've experienced it. Okay, great. Yeah, that's uh, just something I was thinking about today. You know, sometimes people uh, want to be a certain uh, body size or weight, so they they try and force that as well. Uh, but really, uh, you know, even for, like for me, my I lost about 60 pounds and it got lost it just fine, got down there. And then when I got there, I put it all right back on. Uh, so it seems like maybe my body isn't uh, meant to be that small or something. Uh, this is, that kind of off the course there a little bit. It was something I was thinking about. <laughs> uh, let me, I'll jump back on the track here. Uh, what training, uh, you talked about the school there and the cadavers. Uh, so I remember that the, uh, what other training have you gone through and why uh, other than the basic school and learning about it uh, you know what other kind of training have you done uh gosh I've been over 16 years the Tennessee licensing requires um 25 hours per two years uh of continuing education hours um did I say that right 25, 25 hours. continuing education hours per two years. And so for two years over the last, yeah, for two years of licensing. So for every two years you have your license, you have to, to acquire 25 hours of continuing education. Okay. So that's How long been was the place. initial school? So, uh, for the school that I went to, it was um, six months to a year. I went for a year part-time. Okay, so six months full time, or one year, basically part time. Is that kind of? Yeah. Okay. Well, that depends on the school because you've got different states require different have different requirements on hours. Um, okay. So that's that's really going to depend on on the state requirements. Okay, depends on the state. Hours. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, what other kind of training? Um, I remember you talking sometimes about Thailand or you know, uh, Thai massage, other types of massage yeah. that you've learned, what kind of, is that a, was that involved with your first schooling or was that after your initial schooling? That was after the initial schooling, after I graduated from massage school. Uh, my, okay. Well, probably my first, my first class is out of massage school and was deep tissue massage. I retook deep tissue massage and pregnancy massage because deep tissue massage uh, what we learned in school was more like uh, uh, rolfing or um, structural integration type work. So it was extremely deep. So I had to um, kind of relearn some techniques 
that I could, so I could back off a little bit. I had to learn, and I'm learning. I'm learning that lesson now too. But um, and then pregnancy massage because I didn't feel like there was enough um, concentration on it. And since I went into a day spa, I've had pregnancy massages to do and wasn't comfortable with it. So I retook that. And then um, okay. I probably took Lust Stone Therapy next. And uh, then what's that? How do you massage. say that? Lust Stone Therapy was the original hot stone massage. Um, okay. That one was, uh, I took that one in North Carolina. And, uh, so what was the, I'm trying to hear the first word. Is it Love Stone? La, L-A. Oh, L-A. Yeah. Lust Stone. stone. Massage. But you could just say massage. Hot Stone Massage. Okay. That was my first one. And then uh, I fell in love with Thai massage. I saw a, a demonstration done of Thai massage, and I loved the movement of it. And so I found I found a guy in North Carolina that taught it, um, and he was – that was two weekends of classes. I can't mm. remember how many hours of that. And then um, the next class I took was in Virginia, so I've got – about several hours of that, and I've kind of considered that my specialty. Um, although I'm really, I mean, I continue to study it, but I don't do it as often as I used okay. to. So is that, and, then, uh, and you mentioned earlier about the continuing education. Do you have to do continuing education in each of these as well, or is it just a continuing ed- general education? Uh, well, you can just continue a general education. Um, I and you can also choose to continue your education into one specialty. Uh, a lot of massage mm-hmm. therapists will specialize in certain things like sports massage or Thai massage, uh, hot stone massage. Uh, there's there's so many different types of, of body work out there that people can specialize in, mm-hmm. find their own path in that. That's shiatsu, acupressure, acupuncture. There are so many different pathways in the healing arts. Yeah, sounds like it. Now, I know for sure people are getting more interested in that type of uh, in that type of healing, um, you know, the holistic healing. And I know we talked a little bit about holistic coach, so I'll have some questions about that in a moment. Uh, uh, so hopefully I didn't interrupt you. In the, you know, how many other licenses do you have or uh, specialties? Um, well, the Lestone, Thai Massage, uh, Trigger Point Therapy, uh, I do... Um, Positional release, muscle energy technique, clarity therapy. Uh, what else do I do? I do all kinds of stuff in massage. Okay. I try to. I don't really incorporate the hot stones as much anymore because okay. they're a lot to take care of. Yeah, you got to drag them all over the place, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how long have you been doing this actually? For um, how many years, years. experience? 16 years 16. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll shift gears uh, just slightly. So you talk a little bit about what you do and, and how you got there and how long you've been doing it. So if you were to, basically, if you were, uh, I know we talked a little bit ahead, you know, before we turned the recorder on here and you said something about if you were going to hire somebody to help you, it would be more of a secretarial work. Would you want them to have any experience at all in massage therapy or in any kind of holistic health, or could it just be any any person that has some basic uh, secretarial skills that you could hire to help you or somebody else, for instance? Does, it, does that question make sense? Yeah, um, yeah. Massage background wouldn't be necessary, um, but a background in in booking and customer service would be okay. probably a really good thing. But, I mean, there again, I, unless you have your own practice or you have a day spa, I mean, it's, that's going to be a completely different setup. Okay. Is that uh, – now, somebody that somebody that wanted to work in that, not as a massage therapist, but maybe they want to get their foot in the door entry level, they want to be a massage therapist but are just transitioning from the military or another job and they wanted to get into that – uh, maybe don't have the right resources or experience yet to get out on their own. Would that be a good place to start in an entry level kind of a position, work in the front desk, 
support him. Mm-hmm. What, what else? What, what would you suggest as far as that? No, entry level working in the atmosphere that you think that you might be interested in. Like my atmosphere that I thought I was interested in when I first started was day spa, and I I I love the day spa, um, but that's where I started out, and I got an entry level position working desk, um, but I already had experience with customer service and and working the desk. So oh, okay. um so that's where I you know that up to that point my background had been customer service, working desk, um data entry, that type of thing. And so okay. she hired me in to work the front desk until I got my massage license. And then once I got my massage license, she would start looking massages. Okay, so that could be a way. It could be an entry way in if oh, yeah, let's say they just definitely. get out there interested yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, at least gets their foot in the door, I guess. Okay, well that's that's awesome too. So uh, now I'll switch back to a different gear and say uh, if you're willing to tell me more, tell us more about uh, the holistic health coach. Well, holistic health coach, um, I started that. Uh, well, my first class was holistic nutrition, and um, so I think the word holistic had just kind of started coming into play at that point. But holistic just means whole, the whole. Um, so instead of looking at, well, from the nutritional standpoint, instead of looking at what pills you can take to make you feel better, you look at what your deficiencies are uh, nutritionally what vitamins and minerals are you deficient in and how, you know, what can you eat to help that. Um, And so it it looks at the whole body, how to work with the whole body, how to balance the whole body instead of just one part. My arm hurts. Well, let's give you a pill to fix that. No. (laughs) Holistic is why does your arm hurt? Where is this coming from? Is it an emotional thing? Is it a, a mental thing? Um, physical? Did you hurt it somehow? Did you fall on it? Or is there some sort of nutritional deficiency in your body that has started to cause you pain in your shoulder? Right. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. yeah, it does, yeah. Because uh, many people, you know, uh, my back hurts, so I take ibuprofen and uh, then... The, the pain goes away, and then I, you know, a day or two later, uh, my back hurts, so I take ibuprofen, <laughs> mm-hmm. and so it just uh, continues to to get better. I mean, it, it gets better for a short period of time, and uh, there's probably something else leading to that, uh, and that could be the belly that's on my my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> hurts is because of that stomach pulling on it uh, but if i just mm-hmm. went with the specific uh, oh my back hurts i'll just continue to always take ibuprofen and uh or something like that so yeah and i can quick fix, it, uh, which is understandable we all want a quick fix i mean none of us yeah, wants to fix. do the work to to be better to be healthier and that's, that's hard work it's very yeah, hard work and, and that's where the coaching comes in maybe i can say the right thing that will get into your brain for it to make sense yeah. and change it. I don't know, but that's where the so coaching you, comes in. I'm I'm leading in okay. that direction. So you kind of would ask questions about people's uh, how they how they live their life or how they think or what what may have happened to them that could be leading to stress or uh, mm-hmm. illnesses and other things. Okay, uh, and so in holistic health, I know you're trying to go more natural. And would you? recommend somebody let's say has a chronic illness and the health coaching doesn't seem you know how long you would coach them as far as uh, before they before encouraging them to go seek doctor to seek uh, like medical care or is that just something you would kind of go no, alongside you would, medical care? no no you would always because in massage therapy if somebody comes in with neck pain the first thing they should do is go see a doctor um okay. unfortunately that's up to you them to so you can only advise them i need you to see a doctor it's the same with personal training 
Okay. You know, your heart rate is up a little bit high. I think you should go see the, the doctor and have a complete physical before we start. Well, it's entirely up to them. So okay. all I can do is suggest that they see a doctor for their problems. If they don't want to, that's up to them. Okay. That makes sense. Um, makes sense because that, you know, definitely, uh, would, and that's something probably you would want in writing, I guess. I would want it in writing if I if I was saying, hey, you better go to the doctor because you have certain illness or uh, pain that, that may get worse. Uh, it's kind of like those disclaimers, you know, on the uh, any like, exercise plan or anything. You know. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, okay. We have, well, as a massage therapist, there's an intake form that people fill out and on the back it, it states that we are not doctors and that if they are having pain, they need to seek a doctor's assistance first and then right. we get their physician's okay. phone number and so it would it would really be the same thing. Um, yeah. The way the way I have things set up now would pretty much be how I would set up as a coach also. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. That's awesome. And, and as part of that holistic uh, health coach, I know we talked uh, slightly about the foraging and, and uh, some classes that you've taken on that. Uh, do you want to elaborate on, on what that is? Well, the foraging began when I took the holistic nutrition. Uh, there was a, a part of the course where we had to um, discuss wild edibles, and it had never occurred to me. I mean, I, I knew dandelion was edible. I had learned that through massage school. I knew there were wild edibles out there, but um, the video, I guess, just kind of made it clear to me. And uh, so I, I still didn't, and this was probably, well, it's probably been about 10 years ago now on the holistic nutrition, but um, oh. I didn't get into it again until uh, I picked up a book that was called Herbs and um I looked through it, and it was all wild edibles, and I was mm. able to identify some that were in my own backyard, and I guess it just made me realize that everything we need to eat is here, is available to us. We don't have to go to the store, uh, so I yeah. started studying more, and a lot of these wild edibles are superfoods. Um, mm. Well, the, in the Smoky Mountains, wild blueberries grow. Um Chickweed is a weed that grows in everybody's yard, and it is a superfood. Dandelion is a superfood. Um, there's just a, the wild garlic, wild onions. Why not eat them? So I just got into studying it, and it's part of the holistic part of me. It's also for survival. I like to hike in the woods, and, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So it's good to know what, what to eat around you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's uh, definitely important. <laughs> the website's called Eat the Weeds. <laughs> <laughs> and it talked about an uh, item. So, and the reason I bring this up is because I want to make sure that people, you know, because. Um, don't just go out in your backyard and, and start eating grass. Yeah, don't eat the, I don't want people to run out there and eat it. And that's my disclaimer here. Whatever I said or she says on here is not, uh, you know, make sure and do your own research and find out what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, and research it really, really well, special. not just on what you find on the Internet. Yeah, and this one says, uh, so ITEM is an acronym. Identify the plant beyond doubt. Oh, yeah. Um, make, make sure it's the right time of year. Oh, time of uh, year. Yeah, check out the environment. So, you know, make sure there's no, maybe there's contaminants around or something. You know, maybe make sure the environment is, is right. And then uh, use the proper method of preparation. That, so that's the uh, acronym item. Item. Well, that's uh, a good one. Yeah. Well, I knew, yeah, 100, make sure that you can identify it 100% and then or that you're 100% positive of what it is. And then definitely. Make sure that it's in a, you don't want to get it out of a roadside ditch. I mean, you really don't. You could if you absolutely had to, but you probably wouldn't yeah. want to. And then... Um, it wouldn't be as healthy. Yeah. And then um, the preparation, too, because the, uh, like, pokeweed. Pokeweed has, is a superfood. It has so much vitamin A in it that it will kill you if you eat it raw. And it will yeah. also probably still make you extremely sick. If you don't, you have to cook it three times, two to three times before it's edible. 
And you can probably find, like, Appalachian old-timers that either eat it raw or will only cook it once and then eat it, but but they grew up on it. Yeah. But, yeah, preparation is, is big time there. That's pretty interesting. We might have to do a whole interview just on that because it's, it's just starting to... Oh, it's to fascinating. Yeah. About it's, that. Like, um, you know, how did they find out about that? You know, did somebody eat it one time? And, you know, just one, like, how did they figure that out? And then it also brings to mind the movie... Uh, into the wild. Oh, into the wild. Where, I that, but, um, and I, I actually, I believe thing. that, yeah, where he ate, ate the wrong beans. Or yeah, seed. it was uh, like the, the, yeah, that it had the wrong, you know, is instead of the, and that's actually one of the things I was looking up on that site too. It said that you can't go just by picture because the picture doesn't always give it justice. You know, if you're trying to look at a book and a picture, and then you look at the plant. Uh, the picture, you know, however that photographer was set up or the lighting was, uh, the plant mm-hmm. looked very similar. And in, in the case of uh, the guy, uh, McCandless, in Into the Wild, he thought he was eating, I think it was a potato root or a potato seed, something like that. And potato it was actually bean, another... yeah. Yeah, so that's very interesting. Yeah, we'll have to probably maybe do that if you're willing to, to do more on that. And you mentioned a book called... Was it herbs? H e r b s or herbs? Um. Yeah. It, let me see. It was one that I just picked up at one of the bookstores. Uh, the Magic and Medicine of Plants is another. It's an old one. If you can find it, it's a good one. And I think it's 1970s, but it's got really good descriptions in it. Um. Oh, I've got it in my backpack for tomorrow's class. Hold on. What's it called? The Magic of Herbs. Magic and Medicine of Plants. Oh. <clears throat> and that one, is, and that one is... That one is by... Well, Reader's Digest. Yeah, Reader's Digest, yep. Okay. I'll put links to these in the in the show notes, too, so if people want to uh, look at those a little bit. Um, and, uh, yeah. The one I really like is called Herbs... Um, and it's by Leslie Bremness. It's be like boy, R E, M like Mark, and like Norman, E S S like Sam. Okay. Oh, yeah, the complete book of herbs. That's you a, wrote a lot of books, yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's well, awesome. Also... I appreciate that. Oh, go ahead. What... Oh, I was just going to name another book, but if we're going to do a whole other show, I mean, we can. Yeah, that'd be. What do you talk about then? Yeah, for sure. Uh, but that, talking about books, though, I do have that last question uh, that I would love to ask you is, uh, unless you've already mentioned it, uh, what book, what book has influenced you? Actually, I have two more questions. What book have, what book or books have influenced you most in life, uh, and? Why? Uh, be the first question, then I have one more. Okay. Well, I've got quite a few books, uh, but the, I'll just name off a couple of the, a few of the the biggest ones for me. Women Who Run with the Wolves by Clarissa Pincola Estes. Women Who Run with the Wolves. Mhm. Mom okay. and Dad gave me that on my graduation. Oh, it nice. was, and why I love this one. I, I did not read it whenever I graduated. I didn't read it until three years ago. Because oh, wow. I knew when when they gave it to me, I, I started it, but I could tell that I I wouldn't get it. Yeah. So I held on to it. And I knew at some oh. point I, I would be able to get it better. And I think I'm going to read it again. But um, it taught me to recognize negative thoughts in myself and others. Uh, it taught me to recognize ill intentions to question what I hear and not be naive. And it, it taught me to trust in my intuitive self. I'm still learning all of these things, but the yeah. book itself, just the way she tells the stories and her personal reflections on them just helped me to understand me better. That's yeah, great. Uh, any book that can do that is, uh, you know, I, sometimes like it feels like it cuts you open. You can look inside yourself, right? Is that kind of what yeah. you're talking about? 
Yeah, it was, it was a really good book. And then um, another one is called Succulent Wild Woman by Sark. And that one wow. taught me to... Oh, go ahead. Okay, Succulent Wild Woman. I don't know how to spell succulent, so <laughs> I'll figure it out. Google will help me. S-U-C-T-U-L-A-N-T. That is by Sark. Oh, there you go. That's why I love computers these days. I know. I can get it close and figure it out. (laughs) That one taught me to allow myself to be me and allow myself to be creative. Okay. And then I've got all kinds of others. Um, Oh, one that is a book and a movie, and I watched the movie, not, and I didn't read the book, and I'm glad I watched the movie because of all the commentary. The Secret. Oh, yeah, that's good. And that's a good one. Um, and that yeah. one taught me about positive thought and putting what I want out into the universe, or what you put out is what you get back, as above, so below, that sort of thing. Um, right. And then another big one is The Tao of Dying. And that one taught me acceptance and how to be supportive of caregivers. I read that while Dad was taking care of Mom. Oh, okay. And that's the Tao, the T-A-O of dying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so did you find that helped uh, kind of compassion building or? Yeah, um, it, it definitely helped me be able to accept better of what was going on have more acceptance for what was happening at the time. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. And there's there's so many other books, but I'll I'll just mention those. Those are the biggest ones probably. Well, like I said, we'll do, uh, maybe we'll do a few more of these interviews over over some time here, and you can uh, throw in a lot more books. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's definitely one thing. Uh, You know, um, with me growing up, I... I did not think books were necessary. I thought they were kind of stupid all the way up until I was about 28. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, yeah, you know, dad, you know, he would tell us to read. And, uh, like, I don't know. You don't even know what you're talking about. You know, you're a dad. I know everything. And so I didn't, I really didn't read any books Yeah, until 28 years old. I remember I read about 500 pages of the stand from Stephen King one time on a deployment. Uh, that was about it. Uh, then, you know, I hit the audio books and found out there's actually a really good stuff in there. So I tell that all the time. Now, well, I wish he would have encouraged me to read. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm being crazy because he, he did. He was, uh, he did, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just something that we laugh at. So and so really, uh, books and me go a lot of hand these days. And so I'm glad. That's why I asked this question is because I want to find out what other people are reading. Um you know, because always there's there's books that you know you, you mentioned that I think oh I could check this out and read this or I can I know somebody you know I hear somebody talking and I say hey check this out you know and, uh, it's just a great way to to uh, pass on information and get information. Uh, mm-hmm. Luckily, all my kids now they love to read. They didn't take on my. Uh, I'll put links to these in the show notes so people can check these out. Uh, and then the last question, if it's okay, if I got time for one more, is uh, if you could tell your 25 year old self something uh, that you know now that you didn't know then, what would you, what would that be? Being 25 was a growth point in a major, major growth point in my life. So I was. I've thought about that question, and and at that point, there was really, there's nothing I could tell myself at 25 for what I was, to prepare myself for what I was going through at that point. So even career-wise, there was, it went the way, everything was going in the direction that it had to go. I I really don't view that as a point in my life that I would say anything to me about okay. <laughs> so that, that. is there is there a point i mean that's that's realistic you know the, um sometimes i look back and there's some you know the only thing i would say to my earlier self about 25 
well, actually before, you know, maybe about 10 is read more books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, career-wise, um, probably go back to my teenage years is where I'd have to go so I could kick myself in the tail and let myself be the nerd that I was instead okay. of trying to fit in with a completely different crowd that was not me. Okay. So probably from the you time you... I went into massage school, I I feel like I've made good career choices. They may not have been yeah. wonderful circumstances, um, wonderful places to work, and you know, uh, but everywhere that I have worked since I became a massage therapist, I have learned immensely from. So if I went back to any age, it would be 13 to tell myself to be the nerd that I was, <laughs> that it was okay. Okay, now, that's great advice for yeah, anybody listening. Uh, you know, because I even uh, pretty sure I wrote that down too for myself. Is uh, you know, just I wish I would have been more myself. So I'm glad you mentioned that uh, because if I think that's a big pressure on kids to you know act like somebody else. Uh, it's, Definitely. And so you know, and I, I've encouraged my kids and uh, any other people in the Navy or people that run into young people is that are you know kind of questioning what they're doing or I see them, you know, maybe acting like someone else is, you know, figure out who you are and just be yourself. Uh, because it's hard for a kid. Yeah. Chances are nobody's going to like you anyways, even if you're like them. So yeah, so you, they don't even like but, themselves. That's why don't, they don't like anybody because they don't like themselves. <laughs> yeah. Nobody likes so, themselves as a teenager. Yeah, exactly. It's just a tough time. So it's, it's important that, uh, that, you know, that people, you know, maybe uh, somebody, a young person could be listening to this and hear that, that you're saying that, you know, that you would go back and just say, be yourself. And, and that could be the one thing, you know, like you said, in that holistic health coach, you wanted to say one thing coach. that could help somebody. And you never know. That's why I love uh, being a speaker and doing this too, is because of the, you know, talking to somebody like you and you're saying something like that, then, uh, you know, it could be that one impactful thing. So that's, that's awesome. And so just a real quick follow on is if, if you think you could, do you think um, massage therapy is kind of where you would have ended up anyways? Yes, I, I believe so. I, I believe yeah. I was um, guided in okay. that direction, no matter what. Well, awesome. And uh, like I said, to uh, wraps it up, and I appreciate your time. Do you have any last-minute words or anything? If you don't, that's okay. I just was wondering if... No, but, thanks uh, for having me. <laughs> thanks for interviewing me. All right. For sure. I very much enjoyed it and I uh, took took some great notes. So I'll, I'll put this up over this weekend and let you know when it comes out. And, uh, you know, okay. About once a week, Good. I'm trying to put one of these together and uh, get consistent so people listening can uh, be consistent and understand when I'll be uh, actually putting this information out. So, again, I just appreciate your time. Uh, one way you can get in touch with Amy is to uh, her email and I'll put this also in the show notes, but it's massage for life 76 at Gmail and the four and the 76 are the numerals. So you can, uh, you can hit those, uh, but I'll, I'll put that link in there too. So people can contact you if they have uh, questions. Do you mind if people contact you maybe with questions or, uh, you know, maybe no, that'd some, be fine. some ideas or anything like that? Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. Well, that's great. And again, I thank you for your time. Uh, and that's that's about it. So I'll, I'll get out of here. Uh, this is Life's Wealth Development Group. Uh, my name is Matt Ditsworth. Uh, website is mattditsworth.com. And that's M-A-T-T-D-I-T-T-S-W-O-R-T-H.com. Uh, if you just Google that, you'll find it, I'm sure. Uh, so appreciate all your time and everybody out there listening. Thanks for taking your valuable time to uh, you know, listen to what we had to say and, and listen to these uh, awesome answers. Uh, if it's something that you want to look into a little bit more, massage therapy or the, uh, you know, the health coach kind of side of things, then uh, definitely do your research and hopefully this sparked some ideas for you and gave you some kind of uh, line of thought that you can that you can go down. So, again, appreciate your time. Have a great day, and I will uh, talk to you later. Thank you.